Ashley Lubick. And I'm Heather Noakes. And we have a company called Dirtcraft Natural Building. And I guess we're just really dedicated to giving people the, the tools and uh, exposing them to the world of natural building. You know, there, there are better and different ways of, of building a house than just going to the hardware store and buying your highly processed materials that have traveled long distances that might be pretty toxic in nature and just you know taking what's all around us and and turning it into something that's that's health healthy and energy efficient and soulful and life-giving and all those sorts of things so that's that's what we do we achieve those ends through hands-on consultations as well as hands-on workshops where people come and we give in-depth instruction on how to build and um, show them how to do it. When we met, I was still in art school, so I have since finished my fine arts degree. And during that period of study, Ashley and I took a leave and went to New Zealand for half a year to get our hands involved again in more building and just more experience. And um, I guess that was really my first in-depth being with natural building. and. For me, it was a really nice resolution between creating something beautiful and something useful and something that was, you know, handmade. I took environmental science, you know, I enrolled in it because I thought it was a path to some very meaningful work, but in the end, I discovered that I was basically carved out to become a consultant um, and really a consultant in oil and gas. I was a little bit naive going into it um, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted but I knew it wasn't oil and gas consulting. I had been working volunteering with some not-for-profits while I was going to university and Green Calgary was an organization that I really admired and respected. Uh, created a healthy home program and that was a program that really helped people where they're at you know. Um, a lot of people live in, in the city they want to do the right thing. They don't necessarily know where to start. We were helping them through the program address, you know, energy and water use, waste reduction, composting, indoor air quality, toxic cleaners, even food choices and purchasing decisions. So it was really holistic in its scope. But at the end of the day, you know, that program, it was insufficient because what I think is one of the biggest problems in our society is many of us have resigned ourselves to the fact that you know, we need to work a job to afford these lifelong mortgages to, you know, live in these, these houses. But, you know, I, I always felt that there was another way that we could obtain shelter and in doing so, free up the time so that we could do things that we were passionate about, not just things that earned us the money so that we could buy these, these things that we were told we needed. I mean, we don't want to be prescriptive to people. Yeah. We are really trying to share our journey. And um, yeah, we, we don't have all the answers, but we're really trying to work towards you know, creating a set of tools that we can use to you know, help, help ourselves, but also help you know, other people along the way. Once I started to delve into some of the issues, um, well, for one, I noticed that agriculture has an incredible impact on our planet, but maybe second to agriculture in terms of changing the, the landscape of our, of our planet is, is building, the way we build, the way we heat our homes. And so it started as an exploration, you know, how can we do building better? And it put me on a path of green building. And, and through that, I noticed that a lot of the green technologies were, again, relatively in, industrial in nature, um, using foams and a lot of toxic adhesives and all these sorts of things to make you know energy efficient buildings um, and I, I knew there was a, a better way you know to make energy efficient buildings that were also healthy that had low embodied energy all those sorts of things so after university I had a month between graduation and the start of my new job um, where I went out to Vancouver Island and took a two-week Cobb intensive course so um, I dove right in and how Dirtcraft got started was really with um, you know, Rob and Michelle of Verge. 
he just kind of pestered me for a long time to teach a workshop at his place to build a cob oven because I think Rob really saw the oven not as just a tool to bake food and bread and pizza, but as a really amazing way to bring people together, to build community. We went up for beers one night and he said, uh, Ashley and Heather, um, you know, it's been many months, but uh, um, on, I think he said, August 29th, I'm, I'm teaching a, or we're, we're hosting a cob oven workshop at our place and you guys are teaching it. We couldn't really say no. He had already booked it. He had already booked it and he had a dozen people and uh, it was a go, so we couldn't back out. I mean, I had put him off for, for a lot of months and uh, that was kind of the start. And then for the next six months I schemed, you know, while at work at Green Calgary, I was like, how can I actually do what I'm really passionate about? I loved my work at Green Calgary, but it didn't, didn't set me on fire like teaching did. I left Green Calgary on Earth Day last year, April 22nd, and uh, from that point forward, we were pretty busy. We had a busy summer last year, and we've continued kind of that pace this year. And I think since that time, we've traveled across Western Canada and built about 25 cob ovens through workshops. Part of our business, a large part, is teaching um, and having people come out and, and start to learn about how to do these things for themselves and um, the connections that people make at at those, those workshops, whether it's a day or a couple of days. So people leave feeling really inspired and really, yeah, truly moved. By it's hard work, but been, yeah. damn, it feels good. <laughs> feels good. One really interesting thing that has come out of this year's work a little bit more than last year's was the opportunity to work with um, owner builders or people who are working on their own project and they maybe aren't interested in getting a workshop together or that just doesn't work for the site. Um, but they will have us in for a couple of days to give them instructions on, you know, we'll, we'll help them identify their clay and you know, how much clay they're working with and make up recipes. I think a lot of people come to us with that fear that, you know, they've read every book under the sun, their nightstand is stacked with all, all the right books, but the next step is getting your hands dirty and we just, we don't have that connection anymore and, and that's what people are coming to us for is that hands-on. Is this right? Like, is this mixture right? Is it going to fall apart? And you know, just working with them to do the right testing. And... It just, it kind of grew uh, organically. Yeah, it was personally sustainable and the fact that you, know, you were slowly leaving a job and I was still working full time and um, it, it gave us yeah, flexibility. So we could continue to, you know, practice and hone our skills, um, but still get started and, and still, you know, start working. One of the fears, I think, to get started for a lot of people, including ourselves, was money, you know, like, are we going to have enough money to sustain ourselves? And, you know, the truth is, once we left the work world, I mean, our expenses went down quite a bit because we could do, we had more time to do things for ourselves. Um, we weren't eating out as much. Um, didn't feel the need to drink copious amounts of beer. <laughs> well, we had time to start making beer and yeah. we had time to start preparing food more lovingly and so it was more enjoyable to eat at home to the point where it's, we eat better at home than when we go out and pay at a restaurant. So. <laughs> so the pace, yeah, the pace, everything just kind of slowed and created more time and created more space and uh, that's, that's a really amazing thing about working for yourself. Yeah, money, you know, can, it's it's really just a tool and when you try to, you know, manage it carefully and, and it makes you creative. Yeah, I mean, if you direct it to where you really want it to go in terms of um, intention, I think it has a lot of power, but if you're maybe lacking that intention or, you know, lacking the clarity around money, not too directed to those, you know, positive areas, then you feel like you're always living in scarcity, whereas you know, really, we live in abundance. There's, there's a lot around us, and I think our, our culture really tells us that there isn't that it's scarcity, and I think that we don't need to, to think of it that way. Shelter is just such a, a core component of, of our lives. I mean, 
um, as is food, you know. So it's it's how those how those things can work together, how they interact, um, how they meet our own needs, you know, as individuals and as community members and so on and so forth. For us, it was just you know how what are the opportunities to to integrate um, shelter more closely to you know our landscapes and uh, you know meeting all those additional needs so that that we're well rested and we can do the work and we can have clarity and focus and and health. The design course really it really helps to draw those connections and make those connections stronger. So the house is not separate from the landscape as is the individual or the family in the dwelling, not separate from the landscape or their shelter. So integrating and, and really using skills of observation and, and pattern observation to meet those needs. You know, the thing that we're really passionate about is working with other passionate people, people that um, have maybe identified some of the shortcomings with, you know, the, the conventional way of doing things and are looking for alternatives and trying to figure out shelter for themselves and have come across natural building but need some help in that process. A lot of the people that we work with aren't builders, you know. It's working with them to, to help them create beautiful, sustainable shelter using as many local materials as possible and uh, helping them on their path. I guess that's really what I'm excited about and getting more people excited about natural building and hopefully questioning, you know, the, this, this built environment that, that we just have come to accept as the only way and giving them an option, you know, an amazing option. And I mean, these buildings, they're comfortable. I mean, they're not they're not lacking any of the creature comforts. You know, they're more better, comfort. better insulated. The air quality is, you know, often much better with, with clay plasters involved. I mean, with the clay in, in the floor or on the wall, you have a thermal mass capability. So you have much more modulated heating. So just the ambient temperature is more comfortable. It'll take less energy to heat and cool a building with those those elements because of thermal mass. And yeah, I mean, I think our role is really working with natural materials and and to make sure that we continue to teach people how to do it properly so that it is healthy because you know it can, could be dangerous or it could be unhealthy if it's done wrong. We feel really strongly about uh, doing it right and doing it doing it well and um, you know hopefully giving natural building credibility through, through that work. In a world where we're more and more alienated, this is just a perfect opportunity to re-engage with mm -hmm. our neighbors and with our planet. So.